My son is not a computer. Welcome back, everybody, to another Emacs video. Today, we're going to be talking about the very exciting world of attachments in org mode. Yes, you can attach different files to headings in an org mode document, and that might sound pretty mundane, but um, I think you'll find it pretty interesting and helpful. So um, we're going to go ahead and load up Emacs here and see how it works. Disket. All right, now we're back in Emacs here. I've got uh, a little document here called attachments.org. It's basically demonstrate the, the default behavior of the attachments. And um, a lot of this can be customized, but you know, we won't worry about that just yet. Um, and just to show you uh, first how I use this, uh, how, you know, well, to, to put, the, to put the, uh, the end in mind, as they say, to show you the result, uh, I'm going to pull back the curtain a little bit and show you um, a little bit of my process here. So when I open up my org agenda a dispatcher here, you see I have this um, on uh, on capital P. I've got article process. Uh, so what that basically is, is um, I call any item of, of content that I'm working on, whether it's uh, an essay or a, or a video or something, uh, I just have a file called articles where they all go. And the, the agenda up here basically... We'll shorten it a little bit. Uh, basically what it does, it's not Wednesday. There you go. Uh, basically what this does is it has a sort of like a process, almost like your, your Kanban boards, uh, your Trello situation, where something comes in as a, at one stage and then goes through multiple. Um, and you see these are actually, actually different things going different places. Uh, this one here, I'll actually show you. This is a this is an actually another short story, so you can actually I want to show you how you can change a category for something live, and then you hit R, and um, it's just opening up the property drawer. Control C, Control X, and the letter P. You can uh, change the the category property to something else. Uh, but basically, uh, yeah. So this is this is the agenda. So why well, why am I showing you this now? The 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 interesting thing about this is that uh, one of the things I, I like about Emacs is that I don't have to go into the file system in order to start working, right? So if you're if you're working on a project or something, you know, you let's say you're you're on the command line and need to work on a certain file, you know, you you change into that directory or you'll open up your text editor and put in that file path. Or if you're not on the command line and you're in your you know your your GUI. You open up your file manager or whatever it is, and you go to the folder you're working on. With attachments, I don't have to do that. And everything gets its own uh, directory that I never really have to see or deal with. So let me show you how it works from, from, the, from the other side. So basically, as I'm showing you here, this, this agenda is pulling from a file called articles. Um, so this can be done in any org file. So I'm going to set it up in, in this file here so I don't mess with the other stuff. But basically, let's say you have um, in an org file, you have, you know, new article uh, A and, you know, new article B. We can call this whole thing articles. So, so what happens here is uh, what, what would you normally do if you're going to start working on a new document or a new program or anything that you would normally do in Emacs? Uh, you would go, you know, you'd, you'd open up Dear Ed and you would, you'd put in a file path and you'd, you'd open your file, you know, something.c or .html, and then you, you know, you keep working, right? So the idea with attachments here is that I can say control C, control A, and bring up the, the attachment options here. Now, this is telling you all of the different things you can do with the attachments. So you can select a file and attach it. So what that does is it it'll select a file from somewhere in your you know in your file system and it'll put it as an attachment or you can copy a file you can move a file you can create symbolic links you can do a lot of different things but for this uh, demonstration I'll just create a new file which I believe is n n for new yeah there it is so create a new attachment as an Emacs buffer so I'll hit n all right, so create attachment named what? 
you know, new article dot, or uh, we'll actually keep them separate, new article dot A. Actually, well, let's let's not keep them separate because that's actually interesting. Uh, so, so what this does here, I'll create that attachment. All right, and now I've got um, new article A. See, I'm a great typist. So now look, I just saved that file. Look where it saved it. So I'm making this. Um, I'm making uh, this this org document attachments.org was in a, uh, a directory called attachments. Uh, so that's a little confusing. So sorry about that. But basically, what it did was um, in this video I'm making about attachments, it created a folder called data or a directory called data with um, a subdirectory and then another subdirectory with this long hash and then the name of the file. So you might think, why is that helpful? That's in, that's in incredibly confusing. What this does is it basically it isolated this file to its own directory structure. So you don't really have to think about where you're saving it. You don't even have to think about what you're titling this this document. You can call it anything you want. So by its, you know, for example, go back to um, the the main org document that's housing all of these. Create another attachment in the on the other heading, and we can also call it new article. And so they're not conflicting. So now it. Um, each of these these new files have the exact same name, but they can have uh, different content, and they're in their own discrete subdirectories. So, if you wanted to version control one of these, you could set up a Git repository. You can do anything that you would in a uh, you know in in a, your own discrete directory, and it's all separate. So, again, why why is this helpful? Why is this uh, interesting at all? Because I can use this from my from my agenda. So if I go into any of these projects I'm working on, I can control C, control A, and copy a file into there, create a, a new file. Um, you don't even have to bring up this menu. You can, um, you know, if you know the commands you want to use, you can you can get rid of this, and uh, you know it'll it'll look a little nicer. But the point is, I can basically uh, use my agenda to store all of the all of the information for the projects that I'm working on. I don't have to know or care where everything is saved. Um, I know that that might seem like a trivial thing, but to me, this was this was helpful because what happens if you you just opened up a new document, you you titled it something, you saved it into your documents directory, and maybe a year later, you know, you want to pick it up again. You you weren't uh, you know you kind of left up left off uh, on a on a stopping point, and you want to go back to it. And maybe you don't remember what it was called, or it was a uh, um, you know uh, some some file name that was not very descriptive. I guess you could kind of like uh, cat all the files in the directory, or you could grep for something. Um, but you know, what if uh, what if you're returning no results? Basically, by creating these uh, these discrete subfolders where all the content goes, you can basically manage everything your from your agenda. And if you if you archive one of these one of these headings in the file and uh, you go back to it later, uh, the, the directory structure is going to be saved because it, um, I believe it sets it up as a, as a property if you, if you follow me. So, uh, yeah, so this, this ID now is the, is the, is the ID of that directory where the content, uh, for this, uh, for this heading is all saved. So if, uh, this is, this is something huge for the way I like to work. Um, if this is something that uh, that is helpful to you, I think um, you know it's something that you should try out. Uh, let, let me show you really quick. Uh, if we open up this uh, this folder here, uh, I guess I haven't saved that. Oops. So you'll see here now from the from the main org file, there is a data directory. And um, so all the content for for these for these projects is saved in their own discrete directories. There will never be a conflict. Uh, as I said, you can you can go in here and you can set up version control on the on the projects associated with that heading. Um, it's it, it's a huge help, and it's something that um, uh, one of the features of org mode besides the the the, the markup and the exporting uh, and the the heading structure. Uh, this might be one of the org mode feature org mode features I get the the most mileage out of one of my favorite things in there. So 
uh, that's about it for attachments. As I said, if, if you go through and you look at the, um, at the different attachment options, there's, there's lots of different ways to, to set it up. Um, if you wanted to set a, um, uh, a specific attachment directory, you can, you can do that through here. Uh, you can delete all of the nodes, uh, all of the, the, the attachments for that particular node from the, from the main org file. Uh, you can, uh, you can jump right into DRED from the, from the, the heading. So if you want to just jump into that folder where the, the content is, I believe that's control C, control A, and then capital F. Yeah, so it takes you to the attachment directory where all of the content for that um, that node is being saved. So uh, as I said, yeah, go ahead, go into the documentation, look it up, read about attachments, see if it's something you like. I really like it. It's one of my favorite features. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Of course, if, uh, if you liked the video, then I'm happy. And I'll see you all next time.